let's start actually the, the orientation for uh, the faculties of engineering. Okay? Now, um, you have already taken the first decision and you have already decided to join the School of Engineering and you are taking the first year, the first year courses where all of you will be taking the same courses, let's say, till the end of this semester. Okay? Now, last week, you had a presentation about the Faculty of Engineering and Material Science. Now, what I will do throughout, let's say, this presentation is to tell you actually something about the logistical part, how to select, when you should select, why you should select a specific faculty, and last but not least, I will actually tell you today, let's say, good news, which corresponds actually to the question, where could you study the study programs that you will be selecting after the second semester? I will come actually to this part in a few minutes. Okay? Gamat Berlin, khalastu picture? Okay. Now, let me start with the first, let's say, logistical part. In order that you don't get actually confused, I will repeat what was said last week if you haven't attended the orientation. Now you are in the second semester. This semester you will be asked to choose one of the faculties, and we have three. The first faculty that has already presented its major is the Faculty of Engineering and Material Science. Starting by now, I will call it the EMS faculty. Whenever you decide for this faculty, you do not decide only for the faculty, but you decide for the major. Meaning, you have to know which major you have to select if you will go and select the faculty of EMS, Engineering and Material Science. Thus, you have the choice between material engineering, design and production, and last but not least, mechatronics. You have to do the selection after the second semester. Now, people who do not want to join EMS, they will have the choice between two faculties. The first faculty is the Faculty of Information Engineering and Technology. There will be a presentation afterwards about it. And the second faculty will be the Faculty of Media Engineering and Technology. And I'm honored actually to give the presentation to you about this faculty. Okay, what you expect actually from there whenever you join it, why you should join it, once you join it, what are we expecting from you to bring as a luggage, luggage with you to this faculty? And last but not least, you have always to ask yourself, what am I expecting from the other faculty to deliver? Because at the end of the day, you have to expect something from joining a faculty in this case. Okay? Now, uh, I will go back, just actually talking about IET and MET. For third semester, both, let's say, majors, all students will be taking the same courses, and that's why you are still having the possibility to change, let's say, this selection, okay? If you decided for IET, and at the end of the day, you will decide to go to MET, you can do it even after the third semester. In this case, you have this possibility to do it. The main problem is, if you decide actually to join EMS, and after one semester you notice you don't like it, you don't like the courses, it's not what you expected, then actually most probably you will have a problem with courses that you haven't taken in some of the majors. You will be delayed, you will, be having, you will have to take some summer courses in this case, which will be a small problem okay, that you have actually to accommodate in this case. However, today the presentation is about IET and MET. You will go, you will select one of the faculties, and then the third semester, if you want to change your mind, you can actually do it. Why? Because all courses will be the same. Starting by the fourth semester, okay, you have to decide either for IET and MET because some of the courses will be overlapping, but some of the courses, they won't be overlapping, meaning courses will be offered to MET and not to IET and vice versa. Okay, thus, you still have time if you have already decided for IET or MET this semester to change your mind later. Okay, now, let me uh, tell you uh, something that you have actually to keep in mind. Independent which faculty you want, you have to join, or which faculty you want to join, or which faculty your parents 
would like you to join. Because at the end of the day, it's a kind of life decision that you have to take. Okay? There are five questions you have always to ask yourself. Let's say these five questions before actually starting to make a decision. The first actually question is, why is this faculty important? Okay? Because we are talking in 2019. Your question will be always, in 2050, how the world will be? Will I have a possibility to find a job? Okay? Let's say in the major that I am studying now, yes or no? Meaning you have always actually to think about the future. Second question that you have to ask yourself, what will I study? If I join IET, what kind of courses will I take there? If I join MET, which courses will I take there? Okay? Now, most probably, if you have already taken some CS courses, you got actually a flavor of, let's say, the focus of the faculty of MET. Now, your question will be, what will be the focus, what will be the flavor in a faculty like IET or EMS in this case? Now, why do you have to ask this question? Because at the end of the day, you have actually to decide, or you have to ask yourself, the courses that I will be taking, do they match my talents, yes or no? Do I like them, yes or no? Because in a nutshell, I will tell you a statement. Independent which faculty you will join here at the GUC, or at the GUC, you will be suffering for the next four years. We will come later actually to this word, don't actually misunderstand me, but I will actually tell you something. I will tell you something actually for life. If you like something and you do it, you will excel in it. Even if you are not good, okay? Because actually some of the questions will be later. Do I have to be a perfect programmer to join MET? Then actually my answer will be, if you are a perfect programmer, you really do not need actually to join MET at all because you have it already. And that's why the question that you have to ask yourself, do I like it? Do I like the computational thinking? I am not good in it, but once actually I sit and I start actually to solve problems, I really like it, but I don't get it. It doesn't matter. You won't get it actually from the beginning, but one day you will get it. It's like actually going to the gym, and I'm sorry, I will relate actually my presentation a lot actually to the gym, and you want to have muscles. You want to look nice, okay? Now, you cannot actually do it just by looking at the mirror because the mirror will not do anything for you. Now, what you have to do is you have to excel. You have to practice. The more you practice, the more your, let's say, body will look nice. And the nice thing is you will like it more and you will get addicted actually to it. The same actually for studying. Because at the end of the day, and I said it already in my first orientation, you will be studying here at the GUC for five years. Just keep in mind, this will be the best five years in your life. Okay? You will say, no, it's too much work. Okay, I really, I'm having a lot of things actually to be done. I will tell you, once you go and work, you will be having actually more problems. Once you are having a family, you do not have a problem only with yourself but you will be having your problem, problem with your partners as well with your kids, meaning the problems actually will become bigger. Okay, now let me go to the fourth question. The fourth question is um, the faculty. What kind of environment, what kind of lecturers are teaching there? What kind of professors are teaching there? Do I like them? Do I like actually, let's say, communicating with them? Because at the end of the day, you will be spending most of the time here, and you have to like actually the faculty where you are. Thus, the environment of the faculty will be actually one aspect that you have actually to look at. Okay? Last but not least, the most important question. You are not studying just actually for the sake of studying. You joined the German University in Cairo, and I'm sorry to tell you, your parents are spending hell of money in your education. That's actually the question is, will this pay back, yes or no? What kind of career opportunities will I have? Meaning, you are not studying for the sake of studying, but you are studying to acquire knowledge. Once you have actually this knowledge, you want to apply it. Once you want to apply it, you want to see it in terms of money. And that's why the question is, what kind of career opportunities do I have whenever I decide to join EMS, MET, or IT? I will tell you something about it later, whenever we go actually to MET.
Okay, now, the five questions are questions that are related to the when, okay, and uh, when and why. When do I have to select and why do I have to select the faculty? The third, the last question is, uh, where should I do it? Okay, just news, good news. Most of the students, they don't know about the news yet. Most probably you will be the first batch the first group of people knowing about actually the new opportunity that you will have now. Starting by the third semester, you can decide to pursue your studies here at the German University in Cairo, but you are having a new opportunity where you decide to join the GUC Berlin campus, and we have a campus in Berlin, a nice one. Third term students for the first time will be able actually to join, and the good news that we heard about them two days ago is the following. If you decide actually to study there in Berlin, at the GUC Berlin campus, for the next six semesters for 50%, meaning for a minimum of three semesters during the next six semesters, you will be able to get and earn a German degree, okay? Which wasn't the case before. Berlin campus was having a program, and this program is called the Semester Abroad Program. You go for one semester, you come back, you pursue your studies, you get your degree from the German University in Cairo, and your degree will be an Egyptian one. Delwati and the message, you have to digest it a little bit, because at the end of the day, you have to decide whether you want to do it, yes or no. You have to discuss it with your parents, and the opportunity is that we will be opening a registration soon. You will get an, e an email. Stay tuned. Okay? You will get actually an email telling you the registration is open for the third semester. It's not for a semester abroad program, but for a degree program from the German University in Cairo in Berlin. We have that a campus, and there will be no extra fees, meaning what you are actually paying here, you will be paying actually that. Thus, there will be no extra fees except actually the living expenses and so on. Okay? Now, the question is, what's, what's the... Stop talking, please. What's the benefit of joining such a program? Okay? Now, the benefits are diverse. The benefits, you can actually think about them at the end of the day. What you will have in your hand, you will be granted a German degree. And there are actually many benefits before or during your studies as well as after your studies. I will start actually with the benefits after your studies. According to the German law, if you are having a degree from a German university, you will be having a residency permit for one year after graduation. And during actually this year, you are entitled to find actually a job in Europe. And I will tell you something about the career opportunities whenever you will join MET in Berlin, what kind of career opportunities you have actually there. Thus, the door will be open actually for you to search, to seek actually for jobs actually there. Okay? Now, you will be having a residency permit. You will be having at the same time a working permit. That means during your studies, you will be able to work for sure, for a specific number of hours. 20 hours, let's say, per week, you will not be allowed actually to exceed that. Last but not least, during actually the summer, you are having actually a work permit, and what you can do is you can actually get some internships, you can work, and so on. That means during your studies, you can work as a part-timer. Okay? Now, once you are having a work permit and a residency permit, the possibility to do an internship abroad will be for sure higher. It's easier to get actually a job there. Okay, and last but not least, if you want actually, if you cannot afford the living expenses, you are entitled to apply for something we call a study loan from the German state. You will be able actually to get granted this actually study loan. You will pay it back whenever actually you go to work. Thus, you are having a lot of opportunities. And last but not least, you will be living in Berlin it's a world city. You will have the possibility in this case to travel around, let's say, around Europe, let's say, going actually from Berlin. Thus, the message is, 
after the third sem after the second semester, you have the choice also not only between IET, EMS, and MET, but actually also between should I stay here in Cairo for the next six semesters, or is it possible actually for me to go not as a continuous, let's say, duration. I can go for one semester, come back for one semester here, go back to Berlin for one semester, but the minimum duration actually should be three semesters. Now, the message is, whenever your parents will notice they cannot afford it anymore, coming back actually to the GUC will always be possible, meaning you will be enrolled in both universities and everyone who wants actually to come back will be able actually to do it. Good news for the GUC, good news for the GUC students. Again, these news are, let's say, recent news that we heard about them last Thursday, and this will be communicated through email to all of you. Okay? <laughs> now, uh, let me go back. And uh, let's go, Dilwati, to the core, let's say, to the core of uh, this presentation, uh, which, will be about, which will be about the faculties, the faculties of MET and IET, okay? The ones who are, who are, let's say, chatting the whole uh, time. Could you please uh, keep Shwaya quiet? Okay, now. Uh, let me start, okay, and I will start actually to present the faculty of MET. Okay, I will introduce myself. My name is uh, Salim Abdel Nader. I am a professor of computer science. You know I am teaching you. At the same time, I am actually the faculty dean of the faculty of media engineering and technology, and that's why it's an honor for me, let's say, to be here, I think for the 13th or 14th time, okay, just actually to orient students and to try actually to attract let's say, students to, to our faculty, okay? And once we say, actually, to our faculty, I will tell you something, it's my baby, okay? Thus, if I will talk about MET, then actually as if I am talking about one of my girls, okay? Thus, let me start, actually, to tell you something. And the first question is, uh, why MET? Why should I join MET, okay? Now, uh, it's a nice question. You, you have, actually, to ask yourself. Okay, and the question is um, um, something that uh, you should actually answer by looking at uh, the future, okay? And again, once you take a look at everything running nowadays, you will see a little bit of computing. You will find something actually, let's say, a flavor of MET in it, and that's why I will not talk about 2019, okay? Today, I will be talking about 2050, okay? And sometimes, people actually should think about the future. How will the future look like? And that's why, okay, what I did actually the last few weeks, I was actually thinking about the following. Okay, let me actually talk about the world in 2050. And then I ask myself, 2050, this is too far. Just keep in mind, 2050 is in 20 years, in 21 years, if you want actually to be exact, exact in this case. Now, 30, yes, sorry, 31. Yeah, I want actually to decrease the number of years. Uh, if you are talking about uh, 30 uh, years, then most probably I hit already the 80, Inshallah, I will be alive and I will see the world in 2050. Now think about yourself. I think in 2050, you will be almost 50 years old. Now, I will actually show you a nice video about how the world will look like in 2050. Stop talking, please. Okay, I will uh, moderate the movie. First problem is 
problem of mobility. Everyone actually is talking about what? What kind of car am I driving? What kind of car is my dad having? This question won't be asked in 2050 anymore. The car won't be a commodity, commodity anymore. The car will belong to everyone. There is a nice number, 2244. And one of the presenters had a nice slide with this number, 2244. What is this number? No one was able to answer this question. I will actually tell you what the number denotes. The number denotes the total number of hours and the total number of minutes. A car is idle, meaning no one is using it. Meaning if you have a car, you will just keep it, let's say, idle for 22 hours, 44 minutes. This won't be the case anymore in 2050. First of all, all cars will be self-driving cars. Okay? Thus, the whole world will change in this aspect. And there will be, let's say, many other things that you can actually take a look at. Okay? We won't talk about self-driving cars anymore. We will be talking about, actually, let's say, cars that will fly. Meaning, and this is not science fiction at all. Anyone who looked at Matrix movie, the Matrix movie will be reality in 2050. Robots will invade the world, meaning you will have to live with robots, okay? And just keep in mind, they will be there to make our life nicer. They will be there to entertain us. They will be there, let's say, to make things that we do not want to make ourselves. These are the civil engineering guys, okay? The whole, let's say, world will change. Okay. Now, now uh, you, you saw a, mo a movie, and there will be a lot of movies actually online. Whenever you will take a look at them, you will ask actually yourself, okay? Yes, this will be actually the world in 2050. I will question, the first question will be, uh, will I like it? Is it actually exactly what, what I want actually to see in 2050? The problem is you won't be able to change it because actually the age okay, of today is the data age. The age of today is to automate things. And if you want to automate things, you want actually to have computing agents doing actually the job for you. Now, in all aspects that you looked at, there is a need for computing. And once I talk about computing, I'm not talking only about, let's say, the programming courses that we are taking, okay? I will actually talk a little bit about what actually computer science and engineering is, what the faculty of MIT and engineering, uh, let's say, uh, is in terms of uh, study program. Now, if you take a look at, let's say, computing, and you take a look at some of the definitions and some of, let's say, the goals of computing, you will find a lot of definition, or you will find a lot of goals. Some of them are described actually by one of the biggest computing agency or organization, which is the ACM1. Okay, and this one actually tells you computing is a well-rounded academic preparation. Okay, it will prepare you actually for life. It doesn't actually prepare you to work only in the field of computer science, but it will prepare you actually for life. Okay, now, 
what we will be having, we will be having complex problems. What you saw in the movie, you will say, come on, this is science fiction. Yes, it looks actually like science fiction. If you take a look at the movie of 2000, thinking about the world, how it will look like in 2020, you would have actually said the same. However, once you take a look at the world in 2020, you will see that many, many, many predictions Okay, they were achieved. And that's why Google lately hired actually one of the most, let's say, well-known futurists. He's called Ray Mark Zweig. And what the guy actually is doing is, he's predicting how the future is. And Google wanted actually to have the guy in order actually to know exactly what kind of technology they have actually to work on. Okay, thus what actually the guy is telling them, the future will have no boundaries. He was talking about something that I want actually, I don't want actually to dig into it actually today, but he was talking about something called singularity. Singularity means that at the end of the day, you will be having the possibility to have, I will not say a clone of you, but a robot who will be having actually the same capabilities as you, and this robot will be living actually for good. Thus, there will be actually a whole shift of knowledge, let's say, in this case. Now, the nice thing is, whenever you join MET, whenever you go to the field of computing, you will have actually to deal with two aspects, which is creativity and, let's say, innovation. You have to be creative and innovative in this case. Last but not least, there will be a lot of things that should be done in collaboration with each other. Teamwork will be or is, let's say, something that you need actually to learn. And this is something that will be more the next few years. Why? Because computing will invade all other uh, disciplines in this case. And last but not least, you will have, let's say, perfect career opportunities in this case. I will start actually with this part. I will start to answer my question. Let's say the question backwards, okay? MET, I joined MET. What kind of career opportunities will I have? Will there be jobs in the field, yes or no? And I will tell you something, okay? And this is, let's say, something that is proven by numbers and by statistics, okay? Now, um, by 2020, which is in one year, okay, more than one million jobs will be vacant in the field of computer science. Unfortunately, okay, the number of people graduating from colleges doesn't even cover two, for 2.4% of these jobs, meaning there will be a lot of jobs vac vacant in this case, and we see it nowadays. People who joined MET, they were able actually to find the job right after their graduation from the German University in Cairo in top-notch companies. Google, Facebook, Booking, Uber, Quora. That's all, if you think about, let's say, the biggest, let's say, companies in the field of IT, you will find always actually some METs working there. The question is, what do I need actually to do to achieve this level, actually, to be able to find the job? I will actually talk about it actually later. Thus, there will be actually a lot of job opportunities. There will be actually big money. And I will not actually tell you anything that I will not be able, let's say, to prove. Go home and type on your machine, Google, the hottest jobs in 2019. If you will not find for the first three, four, let's say, jobs, things that are related to computer science, then please join any other faculty here at the GUC. It doesn't mean that there will be no career opportunities in the other majors, but actually the hottest job, the most paid jobs nowadays are jobs related to computer science. Okay, I will start actually with the first one, where there is a lack, a huge lack in it, data scientists. I will tell you exactly what a data scientist does, okay? The world of today is about collecting data. You will find a lot of sensors here. The camera is one of them. And a lot of data will be collected. Now, once a company is collecting data, 
what they need, what they should do with it is to analyze it. Think about Facebook. Once you go to Facebook and you comment on something, okay, the next day you will find an advertisement with this advertisement, subhanallah, is related actually to your comment. The question is, how did they do it? I will tell you something. Well, this something is really scary. Facebook knows more about you than you about yourself. Okay? Thus, the huge amount of data collected can get actually information and can predict things that you yourself, okay, is not or you are not able to decide yet about it. And this is the word. The word is about collecting data. A huge amount of data, and there will be a lot of problems with that. Awul Haga is data storage. Most probably, Dr. Maggie will give actually an orientation about it. Okay, you have the cloud. The data is not on your machine anymore. The data is on the cloud. The question is, how can I secure it? There will be a security issue in this case. I do not want anyone to access my data. A company like a bank will not have servers anymore, but everything will be actually stored on the cloud. A huge security problems, a huge privacy problems that should be solved. Whenever the data is there, the question is, how can I analyze it? How can I predict? This is exactly what a data scientist does. There is another field, which is the field of data engineers. The data engineers are there to think about a way how to collect data. Think about self-driving cars. The cars should learn. They should learn from, let's say, things that they analyze. They go, they see a bump. The bump is here today. Tomorrow, the bump is not here anymore. And that's why there will be a lot of learning that should be done. Data science is related to machine learning. Machine learning is related to a specific type of math, which is statistic. And the jobs there are, let's say, in this case, limitless. A huge amount of gaps. And everyone, every company is looking for that. Software engineers will be needed because you are seeing a lot of apps. And the apps, you need someone to implement that. Okay, DevOps will be actually needed in this case. These are the ones who are actually developing the apps. Okay, if you are actually talking about your mobile, this mobile will not exist anymore. The mobile will be just a screen, or this screen won't be actually something that you can touch. Thus, you will be having, having a bracelet. Once you click on it, you will have a device on your skin. That means something that will be projected. It's not science fiction, it is a real thing. And what you can do is, it's a touch, and you need actually people to, who will design this device, for sure. You need a lot of electronic, let's say, work to be done. But last but not least, there will be a lot of implementation, okay, of this application in this case, okay? Now, this is, this is about, let's say, the career opportunities. I will not actually stress on that actually more, However, just actually for your information, if you decide for MET, I can actually tell you, okay, with a guarantee of, I will say, 99%, you will get a job, okay? Now, second thing is uh, the environment in the faculty. How is it? How is the faculty? The nice thing is the faculty was the smallest one, and still, actually, if you take a look at the total number of uh, um, lecturers and PhD holders there, we are actually still one of the smallest faculty, meaning, the environment, is, the environment in the faculty is a nice one. And if there is fire in your life, there will be always actually someone who will care about you. Okay? If not the lecturers, then actually you will come to, more, to my office. If you are having any problem, I will actually try my best actually to solve it. That means there will be always someone who will care about you. If you think about the question, which is the question, what kind of environment the faculty is, have? is, is uh, let's say, what kind of environment do we have actually in this faculty? Okay, now let's uh, move on and let's go actually to the core uh, uh, of this faculty. I will be talking about the faculty itself. There are two majors. One major is the classical major, which is computer science and engineering. 
Once we talk about computer science and engineering, we talk about software and hardware. I will show you, show you, show you some of the projects to give you an idea about, let's say, what kind of projects students will do and what kind of things will I study throughout actually the next four years. Second major is a major which is called Digital Media Engineering and Technology. The core is computer science, meaning a lot of programming, and on top of it, Shwaya communication courses, meaning digital signal processing, in order to know if I'm thinking about a video, how can I compress it? If I am having images, how are the images actually compressed? If I want actually to transmit data, how will the data be transmitted if I am talking about actually multimedia in this case? Thus, in this case, you are having a combination of computer science courses plus some of the communication courses like digital signal processing, video uh, and audio technology, audio and acoustics, image processing that you want actually to analyze images, let's say based on the signals that you are having. This is actually the major that you will be having here. Just in a nutshell, MET, it's a faculty. And the question is, if I want to compare it with other faculties, mechatronics, is there an overlap between mechatronics and MET? And I will tell you yes. If you saw in mechatronics robots moving, let's say, through a maze, I will tell you in MET we'll do the, we do the same. We design the robots and we let the robots be controlled and we don't actually control the robots, let's say manually, but we augment robots with something we call AI, artificial intelligence. Everyone is talking about it these days. People who do understand AI are talking about the future is AI. People who have never heard about AI, and I am sure if you ask them what AI is, they won't be able to answer it, but everyone is talking about it. Why? Because this is the future. Now, in a nutshell, AI is to augment human with intelligence. This intelligence will be, let's say, something that will, sim that will make your life easier. Okay? One day, I'm sorry to tell you that, you will have in the brain of people a chip once you ask someone a question and you personally do not know the answer, this question will be sent directly to the cloud. Data will be analyzed. Information will go back to the brain and the person will be able to answer that. And that's why by 2040, it was, let's say, predicted that in every meeting of a board, there will be always a robot attending this meeting. And this robot is the one who will be collecting the data, analyzing the data, and telling, let's say, the directors about the experience that, will be, that was collected throughout not only the last two years, not only the last three years, but throughout actually the last 100 years. Thus, mechatronics, MET, there is a, a, an overlap if you think about actually hardware. If you think about MET and IET, there is an overlap. The overlap is not that huge, but we give actually courses in, let's say, some introductory courses in networking, some introductory courses in security in general, some courses in cloud computing, some courses in uh, high performance computing. This is actually something that actually we, we talk about. It. Now, let me actually go to show you some of uh, the videos that we are having, because actually our courses are based actually on, uh, let's say, some of the projects. I, I will show you some. One of them is, um, let's say, something that you will be doing soon. With the knowledge that you are... With the knowledge that you are actually acquiring now, okay, we are talking about the fourth semester, uh, you will be able actually to implement something that you see here. This is just a game. Okay, with the whole game mechanics, with the whole game mechanics, as well as, let's say, the graphical user interface. Okay, this will be actually something that you can do in one year. And just actually for your information, with the knowledge that you are acquiring from the introduction to computer programming, you will be able actually to do something like that. For sure, with an additional, let's say, with additional uh, um, knowledge that you will be taking uh, that. Okay, now, some courses. <laughs> some, 
Some projects will be related to hard work because actually some people will say, uh, I love it. Uh, I want actually to deal with, uh, with uh, hard work. Uh, now robot. Most probably we are actually the only faculty here at the German University in Cairo having actually such a robot. Okay? He is or she is really cute. And what you can do with this robot, a lot of things. You can actually program it, as you see, since I love actually sports, uh, the now robot is doing what? Is doing push-ups. Sahwallah. Thus, nice thing that will encourage you actually to do push-ups too. Now, uh, let me go further. Now, uh, virtual reality. Now, once we talk about actually virtual reality, we talk about, let's say, some, let's say, devices like the HEC Vive, the HoloLens, okay? Uh, HoloLens actually will give you, let's say, an idea about uh, something we call augmented reality, meaning you see the world and you augment it with other features. This is actually pure virtual reality where you wear an HEC Vive in this case, and what you can do is, um, in this case, you will learn actually something about pathology. Thus, you don't do it on real patients, but you simulate things on a virtual world. And what you can do is, and this is something that we are doing with the faculty of pharmacy, we are giving it actually to students, and the students will be able actually to learn it. Virtual reality will be the future, let's say, the next actually few years. Okay? Now, let me go to the last actually project, which is related to robots. And I am actually a fan of this one. Uh, because actually uh, this student, Ahmed, uh, uh, is uh, doing actually his bachelor thesis and he is actually establishing the whole robot actually from scratch. Thus, what you see is you will design actually the robot, you will control it, you will augment it actually with the uh, intelligence. This robot will be able actually to learn from the environment and in this case, we are actually trying actually to go into, let's say, the emerging field of robotics, virtual reality, AI, data science, and so on. Okay? Now, um, I don't want, um, I don't want actually to make it uh, longer in order actually to give the possibility to other, uh, uh, let's say, faculties. Uh, I will just uh, tell you something about, um, about uh, something which is related to all faculties. Okay? Um, just the message is, uh, knowledge is important. Once you go to a company, people will assess you, okay, and they will ask you about the knowledge that you acquired through the five years that you studied here. However, there is an aspect that you shouldn't actually ignore, which are the soft skills. And that's why I encourage you to improve your English, to learn German, to improve your communication skills, to improve in general your soft skills, which are, let's say, communication, how do I communicate with people? Because at the end of the day, these are actually the skills that will decide whether you will get employed, yes or no, okay? Thus, go abroad, just take additional courses, try to learn on your own, and for the people who will join MET, my message, which will be actually the last message is, the courses that you are taking are not enough. And that's why what you have to do is, in order to be, let's say, competitive with other people from other universities, you have always to be ahead, meaning you have to learn on your own. I will tell you something. Lately, we were actually participating in the ICPC finals in Porto, and I was asking myself, I want to know how many people are we having by Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Booking, and other companies. The number was huge. And my question was, I would love actually to know, how did people actually manage it? Now, one of the answers is, go into competitive programming. Let's say activities that we are actually doing here, just to train the people with more knowledge. It's not part of your curriculum, and that's why please do not stick to only the courses that are given in your curriculum. If you want to be part of, 
let's say, one of our labs, like the self-driving car, most probably you saw a golf car running. This belongs actually to the faculty of MIT, and a group of people are, let's say, implementing something from scratch. You will be welcome, and you have to do it. And you don't get credits for them. It's not part of your curriculum, but this is something that you have to do, because at the end of the day, you want actually to qualify yourself Okay, to go abroad, to do your bachelor thesis abroad. In MET, in the spring semester, I think we send more than 60 students actually abroad, let's say, for Germany to conduct their bachelor thesis there. Okay? Thus, extracurricular activities are nice. If you think about actually the ICPC competition, we have been participating in the competition for nine years. Students were able actually to get sponsored to go to the US, to China, to Poland, to Russia, Come on, for free. Everything is paid by the GUC as well as the organizers of the competition. And on top of it, you will learn more. And on top of it, you get a job whenever actually you graduated from, let's say, the GUC in this case. Now, to finalize everything, where are our students? Either you decide to go to a company, multinational company, a local company, okay? and a lot of students are really, let's say, accommodated in top-notch companies in this case. This is just a snapshot of, this, of some of the students. Thus, some students are, let's say, working by Amazon, others in Catalyst, others actually by Google and Facebook. If you don't want actually to work for someone, you want actually to work for yourself, do your own startup companies. All these startups are made by GUCians, made by METians. And last but not least, if you are more into, let's say, academia, then in this case, what you have actually to do is, you go and you try actually to get, let's say, in this case, a nice degree from a good university. To be fair, the one who is in Harvard College, he's an IIT graduate, and one of the best competitive programmer that we have ever had here at the GUC. Meaning, if you decide about the faculty, it doesn't mean that you have to forget about computer science. Computer science is a tool. Learn it more. The guy is graduated from IET. He is not working in electrical engineering anymore. He is actually working in the field of quantum physics. Okay? And he is actually a competitive programmer in this case. Thus, please, just let me tell you something. Keep calm. You will get a job. Join MET, and we will be happy to see you there. Thank you very much.